Claudia Cardinali was born Claude Josephine Rose Cardinali on April 15, 1938, in Lagula, a neighborhood of Tunis, Tunisia. Her father, Francesco Cardinali, hailed from Gela, Sicily, and worked as a railway worker, while her mother, Yolanda Greco, was born in Tunisia to Sicilian emigrant parents from Trapani, who ran a small shipbuilding firm. Growing up in La Goulette, which had a sizable Italian community, Cardinali spoke French, Tunisian Arabic, and the Sicilian language of her parents. It wasn't until later that she learned to speak Italian, which became necessary as she ventured into Italian films. Cardinali received her education at the St. Joseph de l' Apparition School in Carthage, attending alongside her younger sister Blanche. Later, she pursued further studies at the Paul Cambon School with the aim of becoming a teacher. During her teenage years, Cardinali was described as silent, weird, and wild, and like many girls of her era, she was captivated by the allure of Brigitte Bardot, who rose to fame in the 1956 film And God Created Woman. Her journey into the world of cinema began with a short film by French director René Vautier, titled Anno d'Or, which she participated in along with her classmates. This led to her being noticed by Jacques Baratier, who offered her a minor role in Goha, her feature film debut opposite Omar Sharif. However, it was during the Italian Cinema Week in Tunis in 1957 that Cardinali's fortunes changed. Winning a competition for the most beautiful Italian girl in Tunisia, she garnered attention from film producers and was invited to study at the Experimental Cinematography Center in Rome. Despite initial difficulties with acting assignments and the Italian language, Cardinali decided to return home after her first term, sparking widespread media interest. Upon returning to Tunis, Cardinali discovered she was pregnant, resulting from a tumultuous relationship with a Frenchman. Despite pressure to undergo an abortion, she chose to keep the child and signed a seven-year exclusive contract with Franco Cristaldi's production company Vitas. Under Cristaldi's management, Cardinali's career flourished, and she became internationally recognized for her role in Mario Monicelli's Big Deal on Madonna Street in 1958, followed by a leading role in Three Strangers in Rome later that year. In 1960, Claudia Cardinali starred alongside Marcello Mastroianni in Mauro Bolognini's drama film Il Bel Antonio, which won the Golden Leopard. This marked the beginning of a successful collaboration between them. Cardinali spoke highly of Bolognini, describing him as a great director and a dear friend, and she cherished her roles in his films, particularly enjoying portraying manipulative women who lead men astray due to her aesthetic femininity. During the filming of Il Bel Antonio, Cardinali's co-star Mastroianni developed feelings for her, but she didn't reciprocate, considering him to be one of those actors who often fall in love with their co-stars. Despite Mastroianni's persistent claims of genuine affection, Cardinali remained unconvinced. In 1970, Cardinali appeared in Jerzy Skolomowski's comedy film The Adventures of Gerard alongside Peter McHenry and Eli Wallach. The following year, she co-starred with Brigitte Bardot in The Legend of Frenchy King, a French Western comedy, and earned a Best Actress Award at the David D. Donatello Awards for her role as a prostitute in Luigi Zampa's comedy A Girl in Australia. Throughout the 1970s, Cardinali continued to showcase her versatility, appearing in various films such as Marco Ferreri's Ludienza and La Scumune with Jean-Paul Belmondo and Michel Constantine. She also starred in One Russian Summer opposite Oliver Reed in I Guapi alongside Franco Nero, the director of which, Pasquale Squitiri, later became her husband. In the 1980s, Cardinali's career remained vibrant with roles in films like Si Salva Kai Vuale and Liliana Cavani's War Picture The Skin, where she played opposite Marcello Mastroianni. She also appeared in Werner Herzog's Fitzcarraldo, receiving critical acclaim for her performance and contribution to the film's dynamic. Later in the same year, Cardinali showcased her mature charm and expressiveness in the sex farce Lucado opposite Pierre Mondi, demonstrating her continued versatility and enduring appeal as an actress. In 1990, Claudia Cardinali starred alongside Bruno Creamer in Squatiri's Atto di Dolore and appeared in La Battaglia dei Tre Tambori di Fuoco, a Soviet-Italian production set in Morocco. 
The following year, she featured in Henri Vernoy's Meyrig, portraying a mother in an Armenian family that immigrates to Marseille from Turkey following the Armenian Genocide of 1915. The film's success led to a sequel, 588, Rue Parody, in which Cardinali reprised her role. Critics praised her performance, with the Armenian General Benevolent Union of America highlighting the flawless acting of Cardinali and her fellow cast members. In 2000, Cardinali made her stage debut in Maurizio Scaparo's production of La Venexiana at the Théâtre du Rond Point in Paris. She also appeared in her husband's television film, Elizabeth, I.L. Saint tous nos enfants. Two years later, Cardinali toured Italy in Luigi Pirandello's Come Tu M.I. Voi, directed by Squitiri. She portrayed a faded countess opposite Jeremy Irons in Claude Lilouch's thriller and now. Ladies and gentlemen, a character who spends her time in Fez, Morocco, with handsome gigolos. The film premiered at the 2002 Cannes Film Festival, receiving mixed reviews but acclaim for its cinematography and score by Michel Legrand. In 2010, Cardinali received the Golden Orange Best Actress Award at the 47th Antalya Golden Orange International Film Festival for her role in Senora Enrica, where she played an elderly Italian woman hosting a young Turkish exchange student. The Turkish-Italian co-production was filmed in Istanbul and Rimini. Claudia Cardinali met Italian film producer Franco Cristaldi in 1958. Although they had a marriage party, they did not officially marry, and their relationship gradually became distant. Cristaldi later married Zudi Araya, ending any further involvement with Cardinali. From 1975 until his passing in 2017, Cardinali lived with Pasquale Squitiri, an Italian film director. They shared a life together for 42 years and had two children, Patrick, whom Cardinali had when she was 19 and was later adopted by Cristaldi, and Claudia, whom she had with Squitiri. Fluent in Arabic, French, Italian, English, and Spanish, Cardinali has been a vocal supporter of feminist causes and identifies strongly with her Italian heritage despite residing in Paris. She has served as a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador for the Defense of Women's Rights since March 2000 and was also a Goodwill Ambassador for UNESCO World Water Day in 2006. In 1995, Cardinali published an autobiography titled I.O. Claudia, To Claudia with Anne Mori. She has received numerous accolades throughout her career including an Honorary Golden Lion at the 1993 Venice Film Festival and an Honorary Golden Bear at the 2002 Berlin Film Festival. Recognized as one of the most beautiful women in film history by the Los Angeles Times Magazine in a 2011 feature, Cardinali has emphasized the importance of mystery in her acting, stating, I never felt scandal and confession were necessary to be an actress. I've never revealed myself or even my body in films. Mystery is very important. In a 2014 interview, she attributed her success to inner strength, emphasizing the transformative nature of her craft. If you want to practice this craft, you have to have inner strength. Otherwise, you'll lose your idea of who you are. Every film I make entails becoming a different woman, and in front of a camera, no less. But when I am finished, I am me again.